Hello everyone and welcome to Production Line. Um, I'm going to jump straight in. Um, we're going to do a... 42 by 26 minutes. 26 by 56. Let's just do a medium one. Yeah, this is in, um, this is version 1.09 alpha. Um, it's currently available on the... Well, he's... The way he's selling it is through the Humble store. Um, and it's £8.99 at the moment. So it's pretty good. Uh, although... I do find that it's a bit hit and miss, but obviously it's an alpha. Oh, Christ. Uh, no, we'll go to... For some reason, the rooting for these are a bit weird. Um, but two. Right, I'm leaving a space of two, and you'll see why in a second. Fit body. Well, probably in about ten minutes. Uh, what was that? Paint engine. But the UI is actually pretty decent because, it, like, everything you need is in the order that you need it. So if I get the resource conveyor. pretty close to this side so I'm going to use this side as the export but I'm also going to get another import and the export side is the little car showroom in a factory um, now I'm wondering no it's expandable that's fine no research well let's give you something to so the first thing I'm going to get is more robots. So yeah, basically, this game is you. It's the closest thing to it is Factorio, in my opinion. Um, no route to stockpile, right? Mm, no, there we go. Uh, yeah, the closest thing to it is Factorio, but like this obviously brings in the element of power management, money management. Uh, resource management because as easy as it looks rooting all these to the sock piles on each individual thing as you will see in a second insufficient resources that's what keeps popping up I know it's popping up so fast that you can't even see it but that is what keeps popping up and I just need a drink because I'm really try through. Right. So at the moment we've got four cars on our production line. None of them are through to paint. This section, the body section, and the paint section are probably the two slowest. In fact, engine, 55.2 seconds. Paint, not a vehicle, 68.8 seconds. And then... 63.35 so yeah there they are the three slowest sections so you always end up with what is starting to happen here which is a backlog of cars now this is why all of this is on the right hand side like as far to this side of the factory as I can get it in my other factory I have actually filled the entire space but that was just like testing it and since then it won't run it actually just keeps crashing which is a fix he is working on actually can't remember his name. Right, no, I did this last time. So that one needs to go that way, and that one needs to go that way. Now, this is also a problem. When you replace, to make it a T-junction in the conveyor belt, it actually removes the chassis. So the little frame, it actually removes it when you update them, so that they create a T-junction. Yes. Is that right? That's right. Is it right? That is wrong. Because chassis. I won't need a second chassis though. A 
shut, shut, if I can get my words out. That is going the wrong way. Right, I need to do that all over again. Um, so I don't even need that. Now this is all costing me money. Right, okay, I can show you now. See how there's a chassis on it? Gone. And you don't even get the money for it back. So you have to kind of keep an eye on that when you're replacing them. So I need one, two, one. That's all going that way. Right, that way. And you have to make sure that you drag the conveyor in the correct way because, as you can see, on the blue part of the conveyor belt, shows the arrow of which direction that belt will go and by default it points basically the most useless way which is the way I'm dragging that way um, oh whoa that was not good um, but yeah as you can probably saw then just keep there you go insufficient resources so when they hurry up that's when we get it Right, I need to finish the production line because it's now up to fit accessories. Fit electronics. Didn't leave enough space. Fit electronics. I like to leave two in between each unit just so I can run a conveyor belt out and one back in. So that if, for instance, when I get a second fit engine bay here, there might be a backlog at the fit accessories bay here, in which case then it can send it to this one if there isn't a queue. Right, next lot not connected. Yes, I know. There we go. Get your electronics. Uh, quality check. Excuse me, I need to cough. And we're back. Um, now, the QA check is 10 seconds. I've never found the use to have more than one of them. But today, for some weird reason, I'm going to find the use for it. So... This now needs to go to here, and then out, up, in. And now I can like easily expand it to two quality bays, so that it can go straight up. And then second quality check, and out. And that's where we get the export. As you'll see in a second, a pop-up window will come up, which I'm hoping the game will capture. I'm hoping it's capturing the menu, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it'll pop up now, and it'll ask us the price that we want to sell it for when we get a customer right now just from the experience of playing it I found that around 51% usually keeps one in your back stock which is now sold but it also gives you the best return on the vehicle because if you go too high they end up sat in your stock for ages and you end up really reducing the price anyway but 51% seems like the safe amount right we're getting a backlog here and this machine has actually stopped so let's get a second fit body and now we can start running them no do that there we go now we can start running them to there again when the resources come in in which case, I'm actually going to get a second resource importer there, and then run that from there to there. Yes. Now, this will now get all of its parts from that one. And what I might actually do is delete. delete. You have to hold shift to delete that. Resource conveyor, update that one, and update that one, just in case. So, this side of the production line will have a separate resource importer to this side which basically will reduce the amount of lead time if that's the right kind of word uh, it'll reduce the amount of time that they have to wait for resources because obviously as you can see this is pretty this line's pretty busy just bringing parts into this side like you can upgrade them so they get faster resource conveyor. So if we run this the same way as this side where it just runs along one entire side and then just cuts in where it needs to then we shall run that to there. Now which way was it? They can go up that way and then they normally come back down that way so I need to go that way and then that way. So this is why I left a two, 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 two
space, two block gap between each section. Because now, when this is finished fitting the body, if there's a queue at this paint shop, it'll send it to this one. Same here. If it's a queue at this paint shop, it'll send this one up here. And putting it in anti-clockwise motion means that this will not go, which I've seen in my first factory that I did, it sends it out, up, across, and back down, and then into this one, which is just highly inefficient. So if you put it to go that way, then it cannot backtrack on itself, except for this one can, because it goes that way. But I've never seen it do it. And I'm going to eat my words when that one's finished, probably. So if I quickly run this one out there, then down. I'll run that one up for the sake of it. Now that is just literally just ready for when I add the next section. And money's not looking, not looking bad. So let's get a second fit in the bay. And run the conveyor into that. And again, I'll just get this ready so it's set up waiting for the next one. What are you waiting for now? Tires. Jesus. Right. Let's get... A now, these can be pointless, but they can be also quite useful. Uh, basically, it'll pre-order in the stock. So if we keep two cars worth for each side of the engine shop so that's what four tires on each two cars eight so that's 16. Ooh, maths um so we need the wheels and then we need the tires we also need 16 of those now as you can see this has started to fill up so this will keep the tires in back stock at uh, the wheels which have got tires on them but tires are a separate thing for some reason. um there you go there's the tires so it'll keep a back stock now of two cars worth, well, technically, four cars worth of stock of wheels and tyres in the stockpile. And it only has to travel from there to there. And I've just realised there's no way of it getting to, to there. Uh, right. So. That holds four cars worth of stock just for this one. And I'm going to get the same same thing. That never happened. I'm going to get the same thing on this side, but potentially not wheels. What I'll do is I'll wait and see what is it waiting on. See, that's waiting on flywheels. So maybe if that's only looking after this one, if I reduce that to eight, that's two, two cars worth, which is good. So then we can get, if we get two flywheels, I'm just kind of looking for like the most common stock that it will be waiting for. Obviously we've only just started so I don't know exactly. So eight wheels, uh, eight tires, and two flywheels. And that then reduces the strain on waiting for resources on these. So you spend less, so the cars spend less time waiting. Why is it taking me so long? Fit body. Um, so yeah, the cars will spend less time waiting. For, see how it just flashes up and doesn't sit there for ages waiting for the resource to get to de delivered to the actual station. Right, I'm actually going to fast forward it just so we can get some cars coming through. There we go, there's another car. Quality check. 10 seconds. And on to export. Right, about these icons. Green means it's doing quite well on time. Orange means it's in a delay. And red means that it's completely stopped because it's waiting on something. But yeah, it's pretty simple, to be honest. Um, I need more research offices because it is not researching extremely fast. Yeah, every time you add a research office, it adds 0.25 points per second onto your research. It sounds stupidly complicated, but it basically means that that will now research a bit faster. So if I get another one... OCD is going to play havoc if I do not place them sensibly. See, there's nothing that's for like one block to be able to fit in there. That's really annoying. That's such an annoying shape. Right, let's get one down here because I happen to know. No, 
I've still got the same gap. Damn it. Uh, let's go. Uh, just because even numbers. I'll get that out just ready. Right. So, we are currently exporting cards. We also have hardly any money, so I'm going to get rid of those. Um, but basically, everything just needs to hurry up. What's going on there? Insufficient resources. Lovely. Yes! Right. Now, if we go down and go to improved efficiency, because then, if I research improved efficiency, it's I can research the faster resource imports, which means that the stock comes in faster, and then I can upgrade to faster resources, which basically makes the overhead resource delivery conveyors, stupidly long name, uh, just makes them really fast. Next one I'm going to go for, when we've got improved efficiency, which if I unpause the game, will actually research while we're in this week. One of the best upgrades, and I think it was, is it Catherine of Sky? Another YouTuber? Her first portal call was more robots, I think it was more robots, then she went improved efficiency, and the first thing that she upgraded was a power plant. Because, if you research the power plant first off, like we're currently using between 9 and about 16,000 guessing at watts of power. And because we don't generate the power in-house in the actual factory itself, we spend $81,000 a day on power. Um, and as soon as you research power plant, you then spend, where is it, $5,200 per power plant. Obviously you get the the, it uses four employees, so you have to pay their wages as well. But, excuse me for a second, I need to cough again. And we're back. Um, you basically spend the $5,200 on buying a power plant, which I don't actually know how much it generates, I just kind of build them until I don't need them. Um, but as you can see, the power's red, and that's because we're not generating any power. So the power up here is red, we're not generating our own power and we are paying for it and that is costing us money so as soon as we research power plant then we can build our own generate power by ourselves at 5400 a go and not pay this oh it's gone up now hundred and two thousand dollars a day on power so that will be the next thing I'm gonna research so let's have a look. All time we have spent $102,000. Which is ridiculous. But there you go. That's the way it works, unfortunately. Um, oh, stop getting insufficient resources. There we go. Improved efficiency. So if we get the power efficiency, and obviously, like, my next portal call after I've started saving money will be the individual section specification uh, specification specializations which then allows us to break down the chassis assembly into different areas so you get the fit axles and in that you get fit front axle rear axle and drive shaft as three separate components so if we count that as one component we get three obviously smaller than this but we get three of those, they're all actually about the size of the electronics bay. I think the biggest one is probably as big as accessories. But they're all like similar size. So you end up taking up a lot more room, but the efficiency is unreal because you save so much time. See how that takes 13.45 seconds to do just the axles. That's half the time it takes to fit the chassis all together. Then you've got the four seconds to fit the undercarriage and then eight seconds to fit the fuel tank. So even though it may not sound like you're saving that much time, it keeps cars moving through the factory. So you've got a constant flow of cars rather than flow of cars up to one point, stop, flow of cars up to the second point, stop, flow of cars, stop, and so on, and so on, and so on. So basically you get a constant throughput of cars out of your factory. I just realized when I did that, I didn't actually name it. I don't think you can name it. But 
At the moment, there is only one design of car in the game. We're making 8,000. I'm actually going to bump that up to 10,000 and see what happens. Let's go 60.33. So I'm now making $9,724 per car. And as you can see, money is jumping up quite big. So the one thing to watch for is on the car icon at the top, it has a little one in a box that comes up, if you've noticed. There you go. And that basically means that you have that car in stock, and there it's gone out of stock, so it's sold. As soon as that starts creeping up to about five or six, you need to lower the price of the car, because it just means you've got a backlog of vehicles that aren't selling, and it's costing money, because they're not selling, and you're still running this factory building. Anyway, um, right, let's see, shall we? So if we get another, how long does that take? 27 seconds. So if we get another fit accessories bay, and another fit electronics bay, and link them up, and I always forget to link up the resources, which I need. Right, so let's go anti-clockwise in, as per. See how it did that? That car just came out of there, went down, across. There we go. Oh no, that one actually went into there. And then it goes up. Uh, do I want another quality check? No, let's just link it up there. So, we now have two fully working production lines, minus the little stops here and there. Um, and obviously, this can actually make the chassis, because this takes 25 seconds, and the first step of the process takes 63 seconds. So this makes a chassis faster, there we go, that was the power management, but that section, so if I go to faster resource imports, let's get research in that, faster than these can finish the car to get it onto the next step, so these need speeding up, and this is where more robots come in. But it is a fine balance with the more robots upgrade. Because if you put too much in one go, that happens a lot faster, the insufficient resources. Because obviously there's more robots working on the car to get it through faster. And as you can see, that's now brought it down to 57 seconds. So there's a lot of time management. Like paint, you can't really do much with until you unlock the specialization for it and have the four different steps. But it goes from taking 68 seconds to 7.9... 24, 8.5, 28. So that actually takes longer. I think. I'm not working that out in my head because my head will start hurting. Um, but yeah. Paint is the only one that you can't upgrade with extra robots or anything to make it faster. You have to physically upgrade your factory to make it faster. Incidentally, because there's the paint shop is three tiles wide. It then takes four to fit in the full thing. So it becomes near enough impossible to make just literally just to upgrade these. It, it becomes impossible. So you have to then think about building a second production line. Now I started mine over here. And I had two chassis building stations. Then the fit body stations which took me to about here just for those two sections. It took me to here, which is ridiculous. But when you first come into the factory, and you're just like, wow, these don't take up much room at all. And then when you start elaborating on that and you get all the conveyors in and all the resource conveyors in, then you go into your manufacturing specialization so then you go into i can't get it up that sounded so wrong uh which one's got it right none of them have got it in their first section but you actually can go into the manufacturer of each individual part so you can start manufacturing like flywheels and tires and wheels all in-house and this is where these factory upgrades come in so like you could have one or two production lines in this one that just make parts to service the fit engine section of the factory. But you'll have to have enough to keep up with the demand of the machines. On the one on my last factory, the one that keeps crashing every time I open it, 
Um, I had three fit, en- fit engine se- sections of the factory. Basically, everything had three until I got to the fit electronics because they take four seconds and then the quality check and then I had two exports. But I had about 150 cars in the cycle in one go. Right, so... There we go, that is exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, So if we get... Ooh, what shall I get? Let's go for... Where's... I'm not really bothered about the chassis at the moment. Right, let's do it in the order that we need to build it. So, as soon as this is researched, then I can do all the individual sections. I will have to research the fit axles section as well. Um, But I'm going to research the chassis, then body, then paint, then engine, then accessories, then electronics. And go in that order. QA office. Quality check. QA office. I don't get it. Um, Let's get a couple more research. then massively speed up the research oh cough um so now we're getting two points per second so it takes it should have take if you get one point per second it'll take 40 seconds so now it takes if that's right it should take 20 seconds if i'm thinking a bit right so i'll go from chassis now and i'll go straight to here you go fuel tank manufacturer and then annual axle manufacture. So you can, this is how you make them in-house. I wish it wouldn't pause the game every time it does that. So we'll research axles, and then I can slowly start building a second production line on this side of the factory. I have found it more beneficial to keep like a basic production line running while you're whilst you're building a second one. That way, this is continually generating you money while you're continually spending it, building your huge production line. Oh, I forgot. Wait, I thought I researched that. What happened to my power efficiency? I have researched it. So why can't I buy a power plant? That's really weird. Um, Yeah, it won't let me have the power plant. That's a bug. Do I need to research something else? So I've already got improved efficiency. I've already researched. Already researched. Ah, I researched the wrong one. So yeah, when you first start, don't research power plant efficiency until you've researched power production. Oh, right. What a lemon. See how slow these are. That's ridiculous. That's better. Um, Is one coming out soon? Yep. Ahead, or did it just disappear? Um, it's also stupidly easy. There we go. Right now, let's get the power production. It's also stupidly easy to delete stuff because it's right click and it doesn't ask you if you don't want to re- it, like if you want to delete it. So I could literally right click on that and it'd just be gone instantly. Oh. Oh no, they are there. Where? It's another glitch. Um, yeah, the 
the attention to detail and the sound in this game are pretty amazing. Um, the only one you can't really see is in there. Oh, it just flash changes colour. Right, let's upgrade these with the extra robots. Extra robots, which is like a stupidly cheap upgrade. It's eighteen hundred dollars. So, is that everything that needs robots? Do I really want them on there? Yeah, screw it. Three point six four seconds. Time is money. There we go. Right, so we've got axles. Let's go to body specialization. As that is, yes, the next step. So if we get power plants, so we need 15, 16, 17,000 power. And where can I put them? So I don't want to put them over here because this is what I'm going to use for my factory upgrade when we go from this to the well if I keep them on this side then when I get rid of this that would be the noisiest office next to a huge power generator that looks literally it's just a V8 that is literally pumping exhaust fumes into these workmen and into the research officers. Right, let's research the next part which is body frame specialization. Now, how many more do I need? So, two generate 15, 60... Uh, two of them generate 3,600. It's kind of easier. So we're at 9,000 on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right, let's run. Just keep the in the factory, I suppose. Oh, that fitted well. Let's go there. Let's not put one there because I could use that wrong one because I could use that for a research facility. There we go. Right, we're now generating 18,000 power. Our last, so in the last 24 hours we spent $225,000 on power and you will see, where's power production, power pur right, power purchase is that one there, that will disappear. So over the last 24 hours, nearly a quarter of our expense is on power consumption. So if we eradicate that, we're spending a lot less on power, which then gives us more money to spend on everything else. Uh, 6,000 we spent on wages for selling the cars. 37,000 on research, 65,000 just on the production, just on the production line. Then the components cost us 557. Raw materials, 36,000. Oh my god, capital investment. What's that? I haven't heard any capital investment. But yeah, loans are locked, which is fantastic. Especially when you're about to go bankrupt. Right, can we actually see that the power's gone down now? Yes, there we go. Zero expenditure on power in the last hour. So in the last 24 hours, it's now... Not quite a quarter, but still quite high. <sighs> Which is fab. Um, but I'm going to leave this episode here, guys. Um, but thank you very much for watching. And goodbye.